I'm back out here. We just installed the uh, temporary panel. So we've got a, a 100 amp panel on one side and then the, the meter base on the other side comes down to a couple of plugins. So we've got that installed, bracing and everything. I'm not going to go into detail on any of that because that's not really what this is about. This is more about getting the trench in, the conduit in, the cable pulled. We're going to hook up the main cable to the temporary power pole. We're going to run it to the green power box. In different counties, for example, I live in Kitsap County in Washington. In Kitsap County, the electrical company actually hooks the wire up to the meter base and to the green power box or the telephone pole. In Pierce County, which is where I'm at now in Washington, I make the connection from the cable to the meter base and the power company only makes the connection from the cable to the green box or telephone post if that happened to be the case. So each uh, county in Washington uh, varies on how this all works. I, I highly recommend if you're doing this in any state or county that you call your local power district and get very explicit instructions on what they will do so that you know what you need to do. In any case, we're going to go ahead and uh, start dragging out this cable, which uh, is, is triplex, or it's a sort of a, a generic trade name for it. Uh, this stuff happens to be Southwire, specifically Southwire brand. Uh, it is a 020204 wire, which is really, really heavy gauge wire. It's the primary wire you run to a house. So it's uh, three cables together, two hots and a neutral. And uh, we're gonna spool it out and get it laid out. One other thing that we're taking into account is we will have a whole bunch of extra cable coiled up in the pit in front of the power pole. And we will put some wood over there and put dirt over the top of that while we're building the house so that when we're ready to connect the permanent power to the house, I will remove the power pole, dig up the pit with the plywood over the top of the cable, get the cable out of here and then trench to the house so that the excess cable will allow us to connect to the house. It's very important that you determine what type of meter socket you need. They're mo most commonly referred to as the ring style or ringless. And in this instance, we need a ringed style, which allows the power company to put a ring around here with one of those little, looks like an electronic chip lock thing. So make sure you get the correct type of meter base for what your power company uses. Temporary power poles require that you ground all of this stuff. So I have a ground wire stapled to the side that runs inside of this and is, and is attached to the ground strip. That wire is going to eventually attach to both of these eight foot ground rods, which we're gonna drive in the ground four feet apart. So the first one is gonna go right about here. And the next one will go that way, which will be out of the way of anything that happens. We're going to see how far we can get it down by hand. Hopefully get... Oh, look at that. Man, it went... Well, it went down three feet, three and a half, four feet almost with almost no effort at all. And now we're going to use a sledgehammer and carefully pound it down. We've got our ground wire here. Comes around the pole.
two ground rods in the ground back to the panel. Last thing we gotta do is bond the panels. So we have pulled the cable up through the bottom conduit. This comes from the green power box out at the road. And so that's these cables here. And then the cables that run to the panel on the other side are the ones that go through the back wall. It is very important that the line and load go to the correct side, the correct terminals inside of the meter. The wires coming from the green box out at the road are required to go into the top terminals. When you look at this, if you're not an electrician, <laughs> you would think that, well, it comes right in the center because that's the way it's set up. It just makes sense to go right into the bottom. You can't do that. It has to bend around and come over the top and line up and go into the top terminals. Then the meter goes in and then these lines that will come out the bottom will go into this other terminal or the other panel, sorry. Make sure you use a anti-corrosive compound. This happens to be OxGuard. Pick this up at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's required on all aluminum cable. These come from the green power box at the road. Well, in order to get the wires in here because of the short bend radiuses, I had to disconnect them on the other side, pull some slack in and groom them. Uh, but they're all hooked up. So I've got the line coming in the top, a load going out the bottom. So you can see I have my line it's coming in the bottom from the conduit right here. This is technically called, this is referred to as the line in electrical speak. Comes around, comes over the top, goes into the top terminals, into the neutral. From the neutral goes out the load at this point. So line in, load out. Load goes through the conduit into the other panel. Uh, this is a bonding strap, as you guys have saw that I forgot to come and do this, so I had to go grab one of these and put this in. So that bonds this panel to this panel. Now, if I had used a metal conduit, I wouldn't have needed to do that, but I didn't, and I forgot. So anyway, that's what this is about. So that is this panel and what it should look like. There we go. So we have wrapped up the install of the temporary power pole right here behind me. Got that uh, done. I didn't go into a lot of detail on this. I'll just say that you really need to understand your LNI requirements and uh, the local power company's requirements for installation of temporary power poles. There are requirements for how high the meter base has, has to be, how high the plugs have to be, how things have to be bonded. And I, to be honest, I forgot about bonding this. And so we had to run down to the hardware store and we had to bond this panel to this panel through this plastic conduit with a grounding strap. But like I said, understand your LNI requirements. This video is not about what it takes to make that all happen. More of a general overview of how to do temporary power. So from the temporary power pole, we have what's referred to commonly as triplex, which is the excess is coiled up here, but it goes into the bottom of the pole, into the meter, from the meter into the panel, from the panel to the plugins. And then this runs down my trench. Into the conduit. So the conduit on the left is for the power, obviously. Conduit on the right is for uh, telephone, and that conduit runs under the road, under the easement, right through all this soft dirt here to the green power box. The green power box, we have left an uh, extra amount of cable in the hole to plug into the green power box. We passed the LNI inspection uh, stickers on the other side of the panel, unfortunately, but uh, one of the things I actually had to come out and correct and then he had to do a re-inspect was I didn't have the direct burial ribbon in the trench before he came and inspected. Now, I've done this multiple times and I've never had to have the, the caution tape in the trench to pass the inspection but each inspector is different. Uh, the ribbon is only required where there is no conduit uh, 
And in this case, that's the direct barrel cable, which is in the trench. And you guys can see it down here. I have two different colors. I have red and yellow. I had yellow on hand. I threw it in the trench. And then I was driving away. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to have to get another reinspect. So I went down and I bought the actual caution electrical line below caution tape, which is the red stuff. Threw that in the trench. Guy came and inspected. We were all good to go. Got our sticker. Called the electrical company. They are scheduled to come out on Monday. It is now Saturday to do the connect. But before they'll do the connect, I have to backfill. So that's what we're going to do real quick. We'll get the backfill done. So I'm going to pull the ribbon out of the hole, backfill about halfway, put the ribbon back on top, and put the dirt back on top of the ribbon, and we'll be good to go. Grab that shovel. Oh, that works. Well, we're wrapping this one up. You guys watched me there. We did all the backfill, got all the uh, wire covered up. We had the caution tape in the ground. That was one of the hits I got when the yellow and I inspector came out the first time. Had to put that in the trench. Each inspector is a little bit different. I've never been hit on that before. I always do put it in, but like you saw there, it got put in there, put down there in the trench, and it's all backfilled. Backfill had to be complete in order to get the power company to come out and do the final hookup. Uh, over here we have the power pole. So we've got a temporary power pole. And uh, this has to, for, for the contractor we're using to build this house, it has to be within 100 feet of the house. Uh, this is about 35, 40 feet at most. Uh, it's in a good spot because it's up against trees, so it's unlikely that somebody will end up backing in or hitting this with a big construction truck. Make sure you have plenty of outlets. There's eight outlets on here, which is a little overkill. You probably could get by with four, and they are on two separate breakers. Uh, that's a whole bunch of detail that I did not really cover in this video. There are lots of other good videos out there on how to put one of these together technically. Uh, just make sure you guys follow your L&I uh, requirements and your local power district make sure you have called them and talked to them to to understand what's required by your local power district before you start doing any work in any case i hope you guys got something out of this hope you enjoyed watching check out some of these other links i'll have my uh, house series build here and i'll have my uh, tractor series uh, of repairs over here definitely hit that subscribe button it always helps me out in the long run Till next time thanks for watching